Welcome to Asbury United Methodist Church uh, here this morning. For those that are listening in, uh, welcome to 11 a.m. morning worship. In the way of announcements, I have a few here to make. We will be uh, having a consecration of new leaders for 2021 next Sunday. The list is in the new newsletter. Please keep our Asbury leaders in your prayers as they serve the Lord through our ministries and missions. Next Sunday, we'll begin a four-part uh, sermon uh, called, I Know the Plans, Finding Our Purpose. It's based on the verse of Jeremiah 29, 11, where I know that the plans I have for you and explores uh, how followers of Christ find their purpose in life, how we can know with certainty that we have a purpose and that God has a plan and able to discern what that plan is. Please join us as we explore our purpose together. The offering plates, as you're aware, are at the doors, and as you leave, please place your giving in the plates on the way out. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Secondly, Sunday offering, the second Sunday offering will be for Delaware Food Bank, and the blue basket is for that collection. You can send your donations in, mail if you like. In order to keep the church open, everyone safe, we'll need a few more people who will volunteer to clean between the services. You don't need to do it every Sunday, but uh, any time that you can give help, we appreciate it. Contact Jessica Snow, the pastor, or the office, if you can help. Lastly, our weekly announcements are found online and in the Asbury Agenda Extra. It also includes our current prayer list. Please pick one as you leave or scan QR code to get on, on your phone. See what's happening here at Asbury. Our opening uh, uh, call to worship, I'll begin by leading that, if you'll participate. It's coming, the kingdom of God is coming. Let your reign, O God, be acknowledged among all the people. We stand on the threshold of truth. We are perched on the branches of justice. Across the horizon, we see the outline of peace and harmony. With privilege comes responsibility. With responsibility comes accountability. With accountability comes honesty. And with honesty comes faithfulness. God of creation and history, equip us to live faithfully in your kingdom. Her opening hand, which is in your bulletin, is open my eyes that I may see. Before we sing, um, I'm not preaching today. Um, I went on a clergy retreat this week, and so um, that's why I'm not garbed up, and I'm going to go sit in the back, because I never get to sit in the back. And... Um, but I wanted to at least address um, the tension and the anxiety that's approaching and building as we approach Inauguration Day. Um, I don't know if it, you feel that way, but I can feel it. And so I'm just going to call on each one of us for the next few days at least, um, from 6 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. to be on our knees for our country. Um, I will be on my knees th during that time, and I would love for you to join me, not that we're going to do it on Facebook or anything, but in the quiet of your own home. Um, if you've never gotten up that early, it's a good time to talk with God. Um, but if you just can't do that, then pick another time and spend significant time, not just five minutes, but a lot of time in prayer. Um, I think we, we all know that the power of prayer is an amazing thing and when we call on the name of the Lord together that it is even more powerful but I'm gonna have a short prayer for that right now and then I'm gonna step to the back and let worship continue holy God we do thank you for this nation the struggles and the trials that have led us this far and Lord we face yet another one Lord, we just ask that you give us hearts of love and compassion, the ability to listen, 
to one another to treat each other with justice and dignity and respect. Lord, that the anger that is felt on, on all sides of this issue can be quelled as we learn to love you and make that the most important thing. That, Lord, that we understand that we are all in this together, that we need to be united with the same desire for justice and liberty for all. And we only find that in you. So, Lord, let us pray for your spirit to come across this nation, bridge the gaps and the divides, give us hearts of love and compassion, not anger and bitterness, and help us move forward into the future that you have claimed for us, that you know for us. Lord, help us to follow you into that future, united as one. Stop any violence. Stop any division. Give us hearts of peace and love. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, uh, you can join me for the opening prayer. Eternal God, you bring light out of darkness and hope out of despair. Share your love with us this day that we may better love each other. Touch our hearts and help our love to shine forth in a world hungry to know your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is from the New Testament, and it's uh, Psalms, uh, chapter 40, verses 1 through 3 and 6 through 10. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the desolate pit out of the Mari Bob, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth. A song of praise of our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Sacrifice and offering thou dost not desire, but thou hast, hast, hast given me an open ear. Burn offerings and sin offering thou hast not required. Then I said, O Lord, lo, I come in the roll of the book it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. The law is written in my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. Lo, I have not retained my lips, as thou knowest, O oh Lord. I have not hid thy savings 
up within my heart. I have spoken of their faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not conceived thy steadfast love and thy faithfulness from the great congregation. Sorry about that. Um, we are going to pray for the offering that we will receive today. As uh, Mr. Ennis said, our um, offering plates are at the doors as you exit. And the generosity that we have experienced from this church allows us not only to um, operate the ministries of this church, but it contributes to the ministries of the United Methodist Church as a whole. So if you will join me in prayer. God, our provider, we marvel that you care for each individual personally. Thank you for giving Joseph dreams for guidance and a trusting heart to follow you. Help us to discern the nudges and leading of your Holy Spirit. May we take action swiftly in response to your call to compassion for people in need. Bless them in the practical ways through our church's ministries. We dedicate our tithes and offerings in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we will um, sing the doxology. <laughs> Speak, Lord, for your children are listening, for a word of encouragement, a word of instruction about how we ought to live in these troubled lands. Speak, Lord, for your children are listening as we drift off to sleep in down-covered beds, in marble palaces, or in sawdust padded pallets on dusty floors. We are listening, rich and poor. We are listening, young and old for a word from you that will heal our lands. Eternal God, lover of our souls, we come to you this morning, hungering for something from you that will change the rest of our lives. We come hungering for honesty instead of corruption, for generosity instead of greed. We come hungering for integrity instead of intrigue. We come hungering for our neighbors to be fed and for all to have enough honest work to provide for the basic needs of their families. We come this morning hungering for righteousness to flow like rainwater and for the justice like an ever-flowing stream described by the prophets. We come hungry and we come listening for your words to us describing how we can participate in your great work of recreation. We come listening for the ways that we can become part of the solution and not part of the problem. We come listening in fear and trembling, praying that we will have the courage to respond and act if we hear a clear word of instruction from you. Speak, Lord, for your children are listening. Amen.
sorry, <laughs> join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Now Aaron will sing. <laughs> Our second reading this morning from the scripture is from the Old Testament, and it's uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Now the boy Samuel was ministering uh, to the Lord under Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was living down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down within the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel rose, and he went to Eli. And he called, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. And now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again, the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to the Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and, at the, and the Lord came and stood forth, calling at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. 
And Samuel said, Speak, for the servant hears. This is the word of the Lord. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jennifer Burns. I am the visitation minister here at Asbury. I am also the social media coordinator. So for those of you online, I am usually behind the computer, but I am honored to be here today in front of you. Today is Human Relations Sunday, and this is one of six special Sundays designated by the United Methodist Church as opportunities to illustrate the nature and calling of the church. These Sundays are placed on our calendar to make clear the calling of the church as the people of God. In this past week, we commemorated Human Trafficking Awareness Day on Monday, January 11th, and Korean American Heritage Day on Wednesday, January 13th. Looking forward to this next week, we have the Week of Prayer for Christian Unity. Tomorrow, Monday, January 18th, is a federal holiday for the observance of the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. This day is important to think about the life and the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the civil rights movement, and the current state of racial injustice in our country. On Wednesday, January 20th, we will commemorate Inauguration Day and a newly elected president will take on the leadership of our country. In the month of January, we also had National Buffet Day, which was on January 2nd, National Spaghetti Day, which was on January 4th. Elvis Presley would have been 85 on January 8th. January 10th was Houseplant Appreciation Day. National Milk Day was on January 11th. Is National Popcorn Day. Thursday, January 21st is National Penguin Day. And last but definitely not least, we have National Hot Chocolate Day on January 31st. All of these days, as serious or as humorous as they might be, are in addition to our own work schedules, school calendars, medical appointments, children's extracurricular activities, household tasks, bill pay due dates, and so on and so on. There are many, many things clamoring for our attention and our time, and we simply become overwhelmed trying to wade through it all and to prioritize how to spend the limited resources of our time and our energy. If you look around at our world, regardless of which side of the political spectrum you might be on, it is plain to see the brokenness, hurt, and need in our country and in the world at large. Many of these issues, for example, racial injustice, are big and complex, and we simply aren't sure what we are supposed to do about them. When ordinary people are faced with big opposition, the instinctual response is fight or flight. We don't think that we can fight these things being ordinary people, and so the flight response wins. There is never anything good on the news, and so we stop watching. There are too many graphic pictures or infographs with scary statistics in the newspapers, and so we stop reading. Social media has too many arguing voices, no one seems to know what they're talking about, or have any actual resources to back up what they're saying, and so we disengage, log off, and remove ourselves from the conversation. It is far more fun and comfortable to celebrate National Hot Dog Day or Spaghetti Day than it is to acknowledge the evil of human trafficking. It is more enjoyable to celebrate Elvis' birthday and spend the day nostalgically listening to his music than it is to hear accounts from Korean Americans of ways that they've been discriminated against since the beginning of this pandemic because of the origination of the COVID-19 virus in China. Those of us who have the ability to disengage from the uncomfortable goings on in our world, to turn our face away from what we do not want to see first need to recognize and understand the privilege that we have and our ability to do that. Consider the feelings of the black man driving alone in a car when a police car pulls in behind him, although he knows he hasn't done anything wrong. 
Consider the young girl living with the effects that come after having been abducted and sold into sexual slavery. Consider the Muslim woman getting the side eye on a public bus from people looking at her hijab or her headscarf. Consider the life of a 60-year-old man in prison for a nonviolent drug offense he committed as a teenager that condemned him to a life sentence in prison. Consider the Singaporean woman at the grocery store getting the wide berth because people don't want to be too close to the Asian lady, even though they aren't staying six feet away from anyone else. There are many people in all kinds of situations and circumstances who simply cannot choose to turn away from sin and evil because it is part of their daily reality and there is no escape from it. Whether we see it or are willing to admit that this sin and evil is part of our daily realities as well. So, as regular everyday people, how do we respond to these things in our world? Aren't these things for legislators and government officials? Is there not separation of church and state? A first misconception about separation of church and state is that it was enacted in order to protect the state, or in this case, the country, from the church. In fact, the opposite is true. The separation of church and state was enacted to ensure that churches have the right to religious freedom. The words separation of church and state are actually not in the Constitution or any other legal founding document at all. What is written is, Congress shall make no law rep respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. This was only meant to stipulate that there was to be no national religion that people would be forced to adhere to but it does not mean that Christians or adherents of any other religion could not advocate for politics or social issues according to the teachings of their faith backgrounds. In his own ministry, Jesus heralded the call for social justice advocacy. In Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19, as Jesus was entering the synagogue at Nazareth, he read from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, which said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. As a denomination, the United Methodist Church has been at the forefront of the work for social justice reform on many different fronts. These issues are not political issues, they are human rights issues. The offices of the United Methodist Board for Church and Society, which is the social policy advocacy arm of the denomination, is located at the corner of Maryland Avenue in Washington, D.C., Kitty Corner from the United States Supreme Court. They have been at this location for over 100 years. It is the only faith-oriented, non-governmental building on Capitol Hill. Their marquee sign in front of the building is notorious for inherently issue-focused statements such as Black Lives Matter, healthcare is a human right, women have the right to live without violence, you cannot serve two masters, you cannot serve God and white supremacy, and I was a stranger and you tear gassed me. Oh, wait a minute. The other location for the General Board's offices are in New York City. Those offices are in United Nations Plaza. If these prominent physical locations don't say anything about our commitment as the body of the church to have a place at the table, then I don't know what else does. So while we have perhaps answered the question of a right to a place at the table and a voice in the conversation and the call that is on us to speak up and to speak out against sin and evil in the world, there is still the question of, but what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? Where do I start? It is true that the lists of sin and examples of brokenness in our world is great. Homelessness, food insecurity, alcoholism, addiction, sexual violence, gang violence, climate change, diseases that run rampant in communities such as malaria and AIDS, 
our broken judicial and incarceration systems, our broken immigration system, our broken healthcare system, equitable access to education, the list goes on and on. The most famous quote attributed to John Wesley is, do all the good you can by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. This is undoubtedly a very tall order. We are each only one person, and we can each only do so much. But we are also part of a body that can do more in unison together than any one of us could ever hope to do alone. Hebrews 12, verses 1 through 3 tells us, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run the race with perseverance, the ra and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such oppression from sinners that you will not grow weary and lose heart. The key point here is the race marked out for us. Sin and the need for the love of Jesus Christ in the world is so great that there is room for a host of hands to divide the work among them and each take their part. The race that I am called to run, the work that I am called to do, is going to be different from the race and the work that Pastor Julie is called to do, or that Mr. Ennis is called to do, or that Aaron is called to do, or any other person is called to do. In the nine o'clock service, we sang a song called Hosanna, and we hear this word in the more traditional hymns that we sing during this service. Hosanna is a Greek word that most scholars believe is the transliteration of two Hebrew words, Yasha, which means to save or deliver, and Anna, which means please, I beseech. So when we cry out Hosanna in prayer, we are literally saying, please God, save us. This is a word that we hear throughout scriptures, six times within the New Testament, and typically announcing Jesus' arrival to a place. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The song that we sang earlier included the words, I see a new revival, staring as we pray and see. We're on our knees. Heal my heart and make it clean. Open up my eyes to the things unseen. Show me how to love like you have loved me. Break my heart for what breaks yours. Everything I am for your kingdom's cause. As we talked about earlier, the first step to advocating for human rights, equality, and the end of the reign of sin that we see around us is to open our eyes to the things unseen, to be committed to confronting the things we wish we didn't have to confront, and to say, this cannot be allowed to stand. The scripture that we read earlier, we are told that Samuel heard a calling, but because he did not fully know the Lord, it was hard for him to discern where the calling was coming from or what he was being asked to do. Eli repeatedly told Samuel when he came answering the call that it was not Eli who had called him. In fact, it took three times before it finally occurred to Eli who was calling upon Samuel and for him to give Samuel direction on how to answer by saying, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When we pray that prayer, Hosanna, God save us, break my heart for what breaks yours, we see ourselves watching the news and the happenings of the world and thinking, Hosanna, save us from this. This is how we begin to discern what we are being called to use our energy for advocacy towards. We see the images of police brutality, of children in detention centers that no child should be in. We see the need for changes in our correctional systems, and we think that someone, somewhere, should do something about these things that we see. This is where we can call on God. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. 
Is this what you are calling me to? Where would you have me go? What would you have me say? And who shall I say it to? These things that break our hearts most certainly break God's heart. The Unitarian clergyman Edward Everett Hale wrote a book called A Year of Beautiful Thoughts. One of these beautiful thoughts was a quote, I am only one, but I am one. I can't do everything, but I can do something. The something that I ought to do, I can do, and by the grace of God, I will. Discerning that call might take two or three calls, as it did for Samuel. It may come in different forms. Samuel heard an audible voice, as did Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Mary was visited by an angel of the Lord. Moses had his burning bush. God came to Paul in a vision. We don't know when or how the Lord will call us to what he has in his purpose for us, but if something is in the will of the Lord, we can rest assured that he will send the message loud and clear for us to hear and that he will continue to send it until we answer the call. We are each only one, but together we are mighty, powerful, and numerous. We should not let the magnitude of the job before us stop us from taking it on. This is important work, and the lives of our brothers and sisters in Christ literally depend on the success of these missions. We must open our eyes to see what is happening around us, to those things that are unseen. We should align our hearts with the hearts of those victimized by sin and evil and continually commit ourselves to loving our neighbors as we are called to do. We do this by demanding reform and justice in all the avenues where it is needed. The observance of these special Sundays, which are in line with the advocacy work of the denomination, are opportunities for us to slow down in the midst of the hustle and bustle of all the demands on our lives, our time, our energy, and to pay special attention to needs that we are called to advocate for as Christians, and more specifically, as United Methodists. Human relations or racial justice, the impact of sharing the gospel around the world on World Communion Sunday, the need for humanitarian aid and crisis response on UMCOR Sunday, the need to acknowledge the contributions and challenges of black indigenous people of color on Native American Sunday, the need for justice reform during Peace with Justice Sunday, and the need to nurture and train up young people to continue the ministry on United Methodist Student Sunday. This is by no means a comprehensive list of all the ills of the world, but it is a place to find a start, a place where work is already in motion, but where there is still much work left to be done. Beginning next Sunday, Pastor Julie will be starting a sermon series entitled, I Know the Plans, based on scripture from Jeremiah 29, 11. And we will continue to talk about how we discern our purpose, how we can fulfill the plans that God has for each of us. This series will take us to the beginning of the Lenten season. We will prepare for hearing that call to action from the Lord and to prepare ourselves to answer as Eli directed Samuel. If he calls you, you should say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So as we close today and you prepare to go out, I ask that you take a moment to think how you can begin to pray that prayer of discomfort. Hosanna, break my heart for what breaks yours. I am only one, I cannot do everything, but I am one and I can do something. Lord, what are you calling me to do? Amen. Yeah, please remain seated for a closing hymn as printed in your bulletin. Precious Lord, take my hand.
as our benediction today, I am going to use a prayer called the Prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, let me bring light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Go in peace.